everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, I suppose a lot of you boys and girls who are listening have already sent in to Lum and Abner for your flashlight. Maybe some of you haven't done it yet, though. I'd do that right away if I were you. Just think what a lot of fun you could have with this dandy little flashlight. It's the same size as a fountain pen, you know. You could carry it around with you wherever you go. And powerful. Say, it throws out a great big beam of light. Now, here's how to get a flashlight. Take the outside wrapper, not the label from the bottle, but the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Must be from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. You can't use wrappers from Horlicks tablets. Well, write your name and address on the back of that wrapper and enclose ten cents. That's to cover the cost of packing and mailing your flashlight. Then mail your wrapper and dime to Lum and Abner, care of the station that you are listening to right now. Isn't that easy? You bet it is, and that's all you have to do to get this dandy little flashlight complete with bulb and battery. Now send in for your flashlight right away, boys and girls. Do it tonight. If Mother hasn't a package of Horlicks malted milk powder in the house now, she'll get you one from the drugstore, I know. She knows that Horlicks will help you to grow up big and strong. Well, don't forget now, boys and girls. Send in to Lum and Abner for your flashlight right away. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, when we left our old friends yesterday, Lum had been arrested and placed in jail, charged with robbing Abner's house. The whole town had turned against him so that he was unable to make bond for his release. In fact, late yesterday evening, a committee called on him at the jail and asked for his resignation as president of the school board. Well, things are looking a little brighter today. Evidently, somebody has come to Lum's rescue. For as we look in on Pine Ridge now, we find him just entering Dick Huddleston's store. Listen. Well, howdy, Lum. Howdy. Glad to see you yeah, out. Yeah, glad to see myself <laughs> out, too, I guess. Come in, come in. Uh, just wanted to come over and tell you how I appreciate you going my bail, dear. Oh, well, now, that's all right, Lum. I was glad to do it. <laughs> just sorry that I didn't do it sooner, but... I didn't know the straight of it till a while ago. Abner was over here and told me the truth about it. Told you that tr- he told you how come he to slip in his house the other night? Well, no, but he told me that she never broke in, though. Said that he left the kitchen door open himself so that she could get in. Well, now, I told him not to tell nobody about that. If Elizabeth finds out he was mixed up in that, no telling what she will do. Oh, well, I promised him that I wouldn't say anything about it, Mom. I still can't understand, though, why he wanted you to get that check that the insurance company paid him without his wife finding it out. Well, we were feared she'd take it into the county seat and cash it. And they could get Abner for obtaining false money under pretenses. What are you talking about? Well, I reckon I may as well tell you the whole story. Now you know this much, you may as well know it all. <laughs> but don't never breathe it to a soul, Dick, for it, it just wouldn't do for Elizabeth to find out. Oh, about. no, no, I won't say anything about it, sir. Well, uh, the whole thing started when we opened up our matrimonial bureau. We never had no pictures of men folks to send out, and these women folks was writing in wanting us to find them a husband, so just to sort of pacify them till we could do better, we sent out a batch of pictures of that. Yeah, yeah, I knew about that one. Yeah, well, uh, this one woman, Hortense Kelly, uh, fell in love with Abner's picture and decided to come down here to see him. Yeah, I know. She came in on the same train that uh, Abner's wife and daughter did. Yeah, yeah, and right there's when the trouble started, right there. It is. Elizabeth seen Hortense run up and kiss Abner down at the depot, and she figured Abner was having an affair and refused to let him come home. Yeah, but uh, she got uh, in a good humor again, though, after he had that automobile accident. <laughs> I guess you felt sorry for him. <laughs> well, now, I'll tell you the truth, Dick. That accident was a fake. A fake? Abner's arms ain't no more broke than mine is right now. Him and me just made out like he was hurt to get Elizabeth back in a good humor. <laughs> well, it worked all right. <laughs> yeah, it was working fine up to the time Elizabeth found that accident policy and put in a claim for damages unbeknownst to Abner and then got that check for $200. Oh, I see now why you were so anxious to get that check back. Why, sure, if they'd have cashed that check, they could have got Abner for collecting damage in his own accident that he never even had. That's right. That's yeah. a penitentiary old thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a good thing you got that check back all right, Mom. Well, I've got it now, but I don't know what in the world to do with it. I aim to carry it back into the county seat and give it back to the insurance company, but, lo me, I can't do that without explaining to them why Abner don't want it. No, no, they'd more than like to tell Abner's wife, then. Why, well, sure they would. That's the reason I had to go ahead and let them lock me up. I couldn't tell nobody the truth about it. No. I didn't want Abner to get in no trouble at home. You know how high-strung Elizabeth is. Hell no, no. It wouldn't do to tell her now, though. 
course, if, if we can send out enough of them flashlights to where we can make uh, enough to restock our Jotham Down store and get that opened up again, we can tell Elizabeth the truth about the whole thing. Yeah, well, of course, that's the first thing you've got to do. And say, the way this mail's coming in here today, well, you fellas won't have any trouble doing that, neither, Lon. Sure enough. Now, this is the biggest day you've had yet. Well, fine, good. Just look at that pile of mail over a thousand of them. Well, for the land, <laughs> Them flashlights are making a big hit, all right. Yeah, yeah, they are. I uh, say, I got the one that you sent me, Lum. Oh, you got it, huh? Yeah, I need to let me on it to you. Handiest thing as I ever had, too. You know, I used to have to carry a lantern home with me tonight after I closed up here, but, oh, this flashlight works a heap better. Oh, my, yeah, handy. You know, that thing will throw out about twice as much light as you'd think it would. Oh, yeah, them powerful little gadgets. And, of course, the nice part about them is that you can just carry them in your pocket like you would a fountain pen, no bother at all. Yeah, well, I bound you folks that's already got theirs has been showing them around to their friends, and that's more than likely the reason we're getting so many more requests from them now than we did when we first started making the offer. Yeah. Folks is beginning to find out what a nice gift it really is. Yeah, yeah. And then I think that there's a lot of people out on the party line that are interested in this contest, too, Lum. See which one of you is going to be elected president of your new store over there. <laughs> yeah, well, that was a mistake, me ever agreeing to such a thing as that. So far, I ain't got but two votes out of the thousands of letters we got. And one of them votes I sent in myself. <laughs> yeah. Well, Abner started running away with it, all right. Yeah, well, me getting in that trouble and getting locked up in jail ain't going to help me none. I no, know that. No, it isn't. You know, them things get talked around. Of course, they don't know the straight of it. No, yeah, it'll hurt you, all right. No doubt about that, Lon. That's what I hate about it. The whole thing, Dick, more than anything else. Some of my best friends has turned against me. Yeah. Yeah. Reckon you heard about him asking me to resign as president of the school board yesterday. Yeah, I did. I, I hate to hear that, too, Lum. I sure did. Well, I didn't know what to do. I couldn't explain things to him without getting Abner into batch of trouble, so no. I just went ahead and resigned. Well, I think so, Lum, when this whole thing is straightened out and everybody knows the truth about it, well, it's more likely they'll come to you and want you to take the office back. Mm -hmm. Well, I hope so. If I could just get to be president of the Jot em Down store, I... Wouldn't mind it so bad, but I, I hate to lose ever office I've got. Well, Lum, you're not working for it like Abner is. Here, while you've been locked up in jail over there, why, he's been out making a house to house canvas listing boats around here. He has? Yeah, goes around with his arms wrapped up in splints <laughs> in a sling, in a way. <laughs> Naturally, they'll vote for him. <laughs> Feel yeah, sorry, you know. <laughs> I see now. Yeah. I told him the other day he, he could take his arms out of them splints that I believe they'd be getting well by now if they were showing up hurt. Yeah. I noticed he never appeared very anxious to do it. <laughs> yeah, I see now he wanted to keep them wrapped up so as to get all the sympathy he could. <laughs> well, that's about the reason, all right. <laughs> well, I ain't give up. I grannies, I've been sort of taking things easy, but if that's the way he wants to do, I'll get busy myself. Undoubtedly, I've got some friends out on the party line. Why, sure. If I was you, I'd call them up and ask them to vote for me, too, long. Yeah. You, you reckon they're all down on me on account of this trouble I got myself into? Well, I, I just wouldn't say anything about that at all. Don't mention it. Dick, it just wouldn't do for Abner to get that office. He's a good man at heart, but he just ain't qualified for it. He's all right if he's got somebody to tell him what to do, but he don't know how to figure things out for himself. And give him a little authority, and there ain't no living with him. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm staying out of it, Lum. You're both friends of mine. I don't want to take sides. Well, Dick, if you don't mind me using your telephone, I would love to call up the folks on the party line and remind them that I'm still in the race. Oh, sure. Go ahead. Help yourself. Let them know that I'd appreciate it if they'd vote for me. Sure. Let's see. Yeah, I believe I just ring Doc Miller's ring for a change. That gets them all to the telephone. <laughs> appears they're getting suspicious of that fire alarm ring. We've used that so much here lately. <laughs> yeah, they'll all listen in when they hear the doctor's ring all right now. <laughs> See who's took down sick, you know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'll always do myself. Yeah, sure. I, I can too. hear them snatching them receivers off the hook already. <laughs> well, go ahead, then. Go ahead. Wait, well, yeah, I want to be sure they're all listening in. Well, they'll be hanging up on you there in a minute, you yeah, know what? That's right. Just a minute. <clears throat> Howdy, everybody. This is uh, Lum Edwards talking. I just want to take this opportunity to thank all you folks that sent in for the flashlights we're giving away. It's, it's mighty nice to know that we've got so many friends out on the party line, and we want every last one of you to have one of these gifts. For It's something we know you'll all appreciate. So if you ain't sent in for, uh, yet for a flashlight, be sure and do it tomorrow. It'll be a big help to me and Abner, and we'll appreciate it, too. Now, I... Uh, just want to put in a good word for myself while I'm on my feet. Y you know, we're letting you folks that sends in for the flashlights decide which one of us is going to be president of our Jotham Down store when we get it opened up. So, uh, natural, I'd love to get just as many votes as I can. 
And when you send in a ropper from a package of Horrocks, just write on the back of it which one of us you're voting for. You know, my name is Lum. L-U-M. L as in Lum, and U as in Lum, and M as in Lum. Well, howdy, Abner. Come in, uh, come in. Wait just a minute. Hey, don't be dick. I've been all over town today getting votes. <laughs> Abner, I'm trying to make oh. announcements on the party line. Oh, yeah, be I quiet. never seen you. Excuse me. <laughs> Go ahead, Lum. I never seen him. Ahead. Well, I reckon that's about all, except that I want you to know I appreciate you voting for me. And we'll be looking for your letter. Thank you. Oh, that's what you're up to, huh? Trying to get votes behind my back, yeah. Well, what you been doing? Uh-huh. Going around here making a house-to-house canvas. Of course I was asking for votes. I grant you I'm going to keep on asking for them, too. I ain't had much to say in this contest so far, but from here out, Abner, I'm after every vote I can get. I'll show you that I ain't through yet. <laughs> well, it looks as though this race for president might develop into some real competition. <laughs> Howdy, everybody. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, folks, I wonder who's going to be elected president of the new Jotham Down store. Will it be Lum, or will it be Abner? Abner was out in front last night, but there are still a lot of precincts to be heard from yet. Now, you can cast a vote for your favorite, you know, and at the same time get a handy little aluminum flashlight with the compliments of Lum and Abner. A powerful, useful, little pocket-sized flashlight. The same kind that you'd have to pay 75 cents for if you bought it in a store. But all you have to do to get this fine little flashlight is send in the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. You can use a wrapper from any size package, either natural or chocolate flavor, but it must be from Horlicks malted milk powder. Wrappers from Horlicks tablets are not eligible. All right, write your name and address on the back of the wrapper and then mail it, enclosing 10 cents to cover packing and mailing costs to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. You got that? All right. Now to cast a vote in the contest for the presidency of the new Jotham Down store, simply write either Lum's name or Abner's name, depending on which of the old fellows you want to see elected, when you write your own name and address on the back of the wrapper. Cast a vote and send in for a flashlight right away, folks. Tonight, before you forget it. Lum and Abner would like to hear from every one of their friends out on the party line. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Now that Lum has been released from jail, he is determined to win the race for president of the Jotham Down store. Yesterday, he made a plea over the party line, soliciting votes, and is making every effort to beat Abner. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find the two old fellows down at their office. They have just finished counting the votes that have come in today. Listen. Well, I still think that there's something wrong there, Lom. I just don't believe it. Well, I just put down what you told me to. You counted the votes yourself. Yeah, I know I did. Count them twice before that goes. But what I can't understand is why everybody turned right around and started voting for you all of a sudden here. Well... (laughs) I reckon they just now figured out which one of us is the best qualified for the office. So we at, at the biggest batch of mail we've got yet, and, and there weren't but 14 votes in there for me. Yeah. Looky there. Uh-huh. Yeah. According to these figures now, I might not catch up with you. Catch up with you? I'm uh, just 326 votes behind now. <laughs> and if the mail runs half as good tomorrow as it did today, I, I'm going to be so far ahead of you, you never will catch up with me. Well, I'll be dead blamed if I can understand it. What did you tell him when you made that announcement on the party line yesterday down at Dick's store? Well, I just said I'd appreciate it if they'd vote for me. Yeah, is that all you said? Yes, sir. You can ask Dick what I said. He heard every word of it. Dog, I don't believe it. 
You must have said something bad about me to get everybody to change over to your side all of a sudden this way. No, I never said a word about you, Abner. I just told them about the flashlight and how we'd appreciate them sending in and all that stuff, but I never said one word about you. Well, you must have said something, Lom. Folks just don't turn around and go right again a fella for no reason at all that way. No, at the time I was talking on the party line, I weren't so worked up over the contest as I am now. I just ain't been trying up to now. This contest has sort of turned into a campaign, though. I've been in politics too long to just sit back and let somebody beat me out of office. Yeah, well, I'm going to get out and do some campaigning myself, too. I'll tell you that right now. Go ahead and do all you can, Abner. I'm dog it, I am, too. If I was you, I, I tell you, Abner, you may as well withdraw from the contest right now and save yourself a lot of embarrassment. Withdraw? Yes, sir. Dog it, I'll never do it. Well, you ain't got a chance, Abner. Huh, that's what you say. As long as you was going around here with both the arms in a sling, folks felt kind of sorry for you. I can understand that. Them votes you was getting was just out of sympathy. But now, since you've took them bandages off, you ain't got a chance. Yeah. I still think I ought to kept them on a little while longer, too. Till after the contest, anyway. I don't believe that my arms is good and well yet. Don't believe they're good and well. No, sir. They ain't been bothering me a right smart long since we took them splints off this morning. Well, how could they be bothering you? <laughs> there wasn't nothing wrong with them to start with. Your arms wasn't broke. Uh-oh. No, that's right. I don't get there's something wrong with them, old Lom. They've just been aching something wonderful all day. Well, naturally they'd bother you some after being rocked up so long that way. The circulate's just now starting up again, I reckon. Yeah, well, I, I believe, Lama, we better just go ahead and, and rock them back up. No, you, no, you don't. No, sir. No, sir. You just want to get folks to feel sorry for you again so you'll get some more votes. I know what you're up to. Oh, sassy, sassy press. Sassy press. I weren't worrying none about the votes. I still got a big lead on you. Yeah, you have right now, but just recollect the battle ain't over till the last shot's fired. Uh-huh. I say the battle ain't over till the last shot's fired. What battle? Why, uh, battle between me and you. I say it ain't over till the last shot's fired. Well, now, Lom, now, here, now, wait a minute. Now, I, I don't think we ought to take it that serious now, Lom. That's just going too far. Of course, I'd love to get elected president of the store, but now, I don't think we ought to get no trouble over it. Get no trouble over it? Yeah, Lom, we've just been friends for so long, been partners and neighbors, and we did for one another when we were sick and lent one another money and everything. I, I just... Hate to see something like this end up in a roof. Well, there ain't no use for us to get mad about no, it. No, that's what I say. No, get no roof. Just let the best man win. Yeah, but now, what if one of us gets killed, Lom? Um, we'd have a regret to it the rest of our lives. Yes, there ain't nobody going to get killed. You need to worry none about that. Yeah, I don't know now. That's awful dangerous business, packing firearms for one another. Well, undoubtedly, you ain't going to start carrying no gun for me, are you? You're dead blame right I am. You mean you take a gun and shoot me just over this election? Why, well, sure I would. I'd hate mighty bad to do it, but now if you think that I'm just going to stand around and let you do all the shooting without some way to protect myself, you've got well, another here, guess. here, here, wait a minute. I never said nothing about shooting you at you. You did done it. I heard you. Just because you seen I was going to take up for my rights, why now you're trying to back out. Doga, you just jumped on the wrong fella this time, Lom. Us Peabody's an awful peaceful folk. Tries to treat everybody nice, but I know that when you start shooting at us, now you've got a fight on your hands. Well, uh, great, I and am. You think just because I'm wearing spectacles that I can't see to do no good. But I can still hamstring a deer at 100 yards long. If you've made up your mind to settle this contest with firearms, I know that I'm ready for you any time you want to get started. Abner, where in the world did you get the idea in your head that I was going to start shooting at you? Why, you said so yourself. Why, I never done no you such a thing. Too. You did, too. Said this battle betwixt me and you wasn't going to be over till the last shot was fired. I know that I aim to be the one to fire. Well, you just misunderstood me, Abner. I, I heard what you said. You said it twice. I asked you over again, just to be sure. Yeah, that's what I said, but I didn't mean I was going to join yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, well, what's going on in here? Well, howdy, Dick. Oh, I hear you fellas talking clear outside the store there. What's the matter? Oh, just a little misunderstanding here between me and Abner. Sit down, Dick. I know that any time they think they can bluff us Peabody out, they've got another guest coming. We've always been known to fight and stop. Nobody ain't trying to bluff you out, Abner. Just forget about it. Yeah, yeah, forget about it. Forget about it. And then let you slip up behind my back and shoot me. No, oh, sir. For goodness sake, Abner. Well, what in the world's wrong with you fellas anyway? Oh, Lom's trying to start some trouble with me. Draw the gun on me a while ago. I never done no such a thing. Why? Well, you said you was going to, and that's just the same as. Well, what's the argument about anyway? Oh, nothing, Dick. This crazy idiot here, he can't understand nothing. 
We was talking about the contest a while ago, and I told him the battle wasn't over till the last shot was and fired. Yes, what he said. Just the one. He got the idea in his head that I was aiming on shooting him. <laughs> well, Abner, <laughs> he didn't mean that he was really going to shoot you. And I don't want him shooting at me, neither. Dick, there ain't no use to try to explain it to him. Yeah, the I more know. you talk to him, the worse he gets. I know my right. I've learned long ago the best way to do when he gets mixed up this way is just to shut up about it. Let him cool off. He, he's just doing a lot of talking. Talking? Just doing a lot of talking. That's all you're doing. Yeah. Well, that's so right that you don't know us Peabody from. We're dangerous people to meddle with. How many more than eight people had anybody by the name of Edwards ever shot? Huh? I say, how many more than eight people had anybody by the name of Edwards ever shot? Well, <laughs> I don't know. Hardly none, I hope. <laughs> well, Uncle Zeke Peabody did. Back when uh, Peabody and uh, Jenkins did with a feudin', why, he shot eight of them in one season. Well, that ain't nothing to be bragging about. Well, it ain't nothing to be ashamed of. You never used but nine cartridges. Well, just forget about shooting, Abner. Shooting who? Well, just forget about shooting. We're not going to have no trouble <laughs> now. Just just calm down. You'll be all right directly, and then you'll be ashamed the way you've been talking. Why, sure, Abner. <laughs> you just got things all mixed up here. Rum didn't mean that at all. You just <laughs> misunderstood him. Well, look here. I, I hadn't noticed that you got the bandages off your arm. Yeah, and I'm glad I done it now, too. I hated getting a gunfight with both my arms wrapped up in spring it that way. Yeah. Yeah, look there. I dog it out in the drawer just this fast it Here, Abner, put that gun up. Yeah, put that up, Abner. Oh, Swan, ever since he's got to be constable where he can carry that gun without being rested, he packs it every place he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's going to make him eat it one of these days. Yeah, you better be careful about that, Abner, sure enough. Well, uh, how's the contest coming, Lum? I noticed you got an awful lot of mail today. Oh, yeah, I aim to tell you, Dick. Uh, you know, out of all them letters you and Cedric brung over here, Abner never got but 14 votes. <laughs> yeah, right? all the rest of them was for me. Well, say, you kind of staged a comeback, didn't oh, you, Oh, yeah, I think that talk I give them on the party line yesterday sort of woke some of them up. Yeah, well, I knew if you just made up your mind to get in there and fight that you could make good contest. Oh, yeah, you. I aim to put on a campaign now like you never heard of before. <laughs> make that old campaign speech here, was you? Yeah, right? recollect when I ran for Justice of the Peace here a few years back yeah. and Squire Skimp was running again. Yeah, that was a hot contest. Well, I'm going to adopt some of them same tactics on this. <laughs> Put signs around town and everything. <laughs> Don't speak the county if necessary. Well, that's the thing to do. You and Abner Bowles just work your best. Uh, I'm going over to Cherry Hill tonight to make a little talk. Oh, yeah? It's a good roads meeting over there. I think I'll get up there and tell them about the contest while I'm over there. On my feet and all. Yeah, well, I was aiming on going over there to that meeting, too, I heard about today. All right, Granny, if you're going, I'd love to ride over with you. Why, sure. I'd be glad to have you. There's plenty of room, Lum. Just get in and go with us. I'm getting enthusiastic. Or enthusiastic. Yeah, enthusiastic over this <laughs> contest now, huh? Only ain't but uh, 326 votes behind, you know. Well, say, now, this is developing into a pretty close contest now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What are you doing there, Abner? I don't guess it can't be there. What are you talking about? You can't get that gun in your mouth there. I know I can't. That's what I say. Nobody could make me eat this gun if they wanted to. I didn't figure you know what you was talking well, about. Well, put that gun up. I'll there. put it up when I get good and ready. Well, you're going to hurt somebody. I ain't going to. You put it up right now. Here, give me that. Oh, gun. yeah, don't. Turn loose now, Lum. Turn loose. Get away. Turn loose. Get away from here, Lum. Well, we imagine that this argument seems to have ended rather seriously after all. But we also imagine that neither of the old fellows will be hurt badly enough, but what they'll appreciate your vote. ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. And now, folks, I have a special message from Lum and Abner. They want me to tell you how much they appreciate your sending in for the flashlight they are offering. They really never knew that they had so many friends out there on the party line. As a matter of fact, they've received so many requests that the flashlight factory is swamped. But they're working day and night 
and everybody who sent in a wrapper and the ten cents to cover mailing will get their gift as soon as possible. Now, if you haven't yet sent in for your flashlight, here's how to do it. Write your name and address on the back of the outside wrapper from a package of Horlick's malted milk powder. Not the label on the bottle, but the outside wrapper. And it must be from Horlick's malted milk powder. Don't send in wrappers from Horlick's tablets, for they are not eligible. All right, send your wrapper with your name and address and with ten cents to cover packing and mailing costs to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are listening. In return... Lum and Abner will send you an aluminum pocket-sized flashlight, complete with bulb and battery. Now send in your request right away. The quicker you get it in to Lum and Abner, the quicker you'll get your flashlight. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. When we left our old friends yesterday, Lum and Abner were quarreling over a pistol. And during the scuffle, the gun was accidentally discharged. We haven't learned as yet who, if anyone, was hurt. But as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner and Cedric Weehunt down at their office in the Matrimonial Bureau. Maybe we can find out some more about it. Listen. Well, Mr. Lum was telling down there at the barbershop a while ago that you shot him on a purpose. You said you just shot him to get him out of the race for president. Why, well, I never done no such a thing. I had the pistol there in my hand, and... He got to scuffling with me, trying to take it away from me, and, well, somewhere or another, the gun went off. Well, if it just went off accidental, how could he get shot so many times like he did? Shot so many times? Yes, and he said down there a while ago that he was shot seven times. Why, he weren't no such a thing. I never even heard him. The bullet just went right through his coat sleeve and just sort of burned his arm a little, all it done. <laughs> He's got his arm all bandaged up and his head all wrapped up. <laughs> Standing around down there telling everybody that he doubts if he ever gets over it. Well, I'll be dead plain. I wondered why he'd been out of the store all day. I see now what he'd been up to. Just standing around on the street trying to get folks' his sympathy so they'll vote for him. Yes, sir, I know that's what he's doing for I, I heard him ask Mose Mooks to vote for him. He did. <laughs> yes, sir. Said he had to get to be president now for he wouldn't be able to do no hard work. He's going to be crippled up so bad. Well, that snake in the weeds. Just as quick as we count up the votes today while he left right out of here. He must have went right over to his place and bandaged himself up just to get some more votes. Well, how's the contest running now, Mr. Abner? Man, I had been ahead up till today, Cedric, but this last batch of mail that come in was might now all voting for him. Voting for Mr. Long? Yeah, he, he's over 400 ahead of me now. Oh, my goodness. Well, it looks like you ain't got much of a chance now. No, uh, I'm just afraid I've lost it, Cedric, last night. Study up something to do right quick. The way I started out, I thought I had the office and gone, but ever since me and Lum been partners, out of all the businesses we've been in, I've never got to be president of nothing yet. Yes, sir, I, I know he generally always holds that office. He yeah, always has, yeah. I sort of in hopes you'd get elected for if I go to work for you fellas again when you get the store opened up. I, I believe I'd rather have you for a boss than him. Well, thank you. He's just as nice as pie till somebody comes around he wants to show out in front of, and then he starts bossing me around like I was a varmint or something. Yeah, well, Lum's awful bad about that. He does love to show his authority. Yeah, I'd just love to be president just one time. I'd dog it if I wouldn't make him step around. Well, the trouble is, you ain't getting out and trying to get votes like you was there at first, Mr. Abner. Well, I've been running so far ahead, Cedric. I didn't figure I had to. Doggy, I'm going to from here out, though, I'll tell you that. He'll know he's been the race when we get through. That's the reason I called you over here, too, Cedric. I want to hire you to go to work for me. Go to work for you? Yeah, Dick says he ain't using his study down there at his store. Oh, no, no, ma. Just sort of hang around down there and run errands for him whenever he needs me. Yeah, well, now, this will be study work, Cedric, till after the contest is over anyway. And then I'll put you to work here in the store if I'm elected president. What kind of work is it you want me to do? Well, I've uh, got a sign I painted this morning, Cedric. Uh, here it is, leaning against the counter over here, right there. Oh, that sign there? You, yeah. you painted that yourself? Yeah, I done it myself. <laughs> Vote for Abner Peabody for president. Yeah, now yeah. all you have to do, Cedric, is just carry that sign up and down the street. Tomorrow's Saturday, and there'll be a lot of folks in town, and I want you to just stay on the street all day with this sign. Well, uh, wait a minute, though. How much are you aiming on paying me for that kind of work? Well, now, that's what I want to talk to you about, uh, find out how much you figured it's worth. 
Well, that sign carrying runs a little higher than most work, you know. Uh, uh, see, that sort of outdoor advertising, you might say. <laughs> uh, I have to get a pretty good price for that. Well, how much? How much? Well, it, it ought to be worth, uh... uh <laughs> how much do you figure on paying me? Well, that sort of depends on what you ask, Cedric. I know I ain't going to pay you as much as you want. <laughs> Well, I know I ain't going to work for what you offer me, neither. I know that. Well, now, Cedric, we ain't going to get no place now to one of us named a price here. Well, I ain't going to do that for I'm fear my price won't be lower than you, you'd give me. Yeah. I've done that once. Well, uh, if you were setting a price, what would you say about uh, $3 a day? Yes, sir. I believe that's about what I'd say. <laughs> I'll take it. Well, well, here, wait a minute now. I never said I'd give you that. That's just what you're asking. Now, I'll give you. A dollar a day. Uh, no, I don't believe I could carry the sign for that much. Couldn't. Two dollars be the least I could do it for. I, I wouldn't carry it for myself for less than that. Yeah, well, uh, ain't no use for us to talk in, Cedric. For a dollar and a half, the most I'd be willing to pay. Well, that still leaves us 25 cents apart, then. Yeah. If it ain't worth a dollar and six bits, it ain't worth nothing. Well, I'll tell you what I'll do, Cedric. I'll just split the difference. Make it a dollar and a half. All right, sir. All right, when do we start? Well, you can start right out in the morning. Of course, uh, now you could take it out on the streets this afternoon and sort of practice carrying it so you'll know how good when you start to work tomorrow if you want to. Yes, sir. All i got to do is just walk hey, along well, with the here comes Dick Cotterson. <laughs> yes, um, don't tell him I started to work for you, Mr. Abner. No. Um, I owe him a little more than I've got coming to me down there at his store. I don't believe he'd want me to quit much. No. Looks like every time I pass that candy case down there, I get further in debt. <laughs> yeah, you always was bad about eating stuff up, Cedric. Worse than my shit. Hey, howdy, Dick. Come in. Uh, how do, Mr. Hudson? Well, howdy, howdy. Say, Abner, have you seen Long? No, not in the last three or four hours. Well, he's down the store a while ago. I didn't hardly know him. <laughs> he's got himself all bandaged up. Looked like he'd been run over by a freight train. Yeah, Cedric was telling me that a while ago. Yes, sir, I seen him a while ago. Yeah, he just using that to get boats with. I know what he's up to. <laughs> Why, sure. He wasn't hurt in here yesterday. Doc Miller was telling me he tried to get him to bandage him up yesterday evening, but the Doc told him that there wasn't nothing wrong with him. Just a little powder burnt there on his arm. Why, law me. He stood around here for ten minutes yesterday after the shot was fired before he knowed he'd been hit at all. Wouldn't have known it then if he hadn't looked down and seen a hole in his coat sleeve. <laughs> Well, he's claiming now that you shot him on purpose to get him out of the race. Yeah, he knows better than that. You better mind out what y'all are saying, yonder. He comes up the road there now. Yeah, and look at that. Just look at him. Got bandages all over him. The way he's ropped <laughs> up there, you think I shot him with a shotgun instead of a pistol. <laughs> yeah. Well, look, he's limping now. <laughs> That's something new he's found since I saw him a while ago. <laughs> yeah, well, he'll be going around here in a wheelchair tomorrow if he can find one anyplace. <laughs> well, he's sure getting the votes, Abner. Tickled me over at Cherry Hill last night at the Good Roads meeting. They called on him for a talk, and he spent the whole time telling them about this flashlight and asking them to send in for one of them to be sure and vote for him. <laughs> yeah, well, I noticed we got a lot of votes from Cherry Hill today, and he got all of them. Oh, yeah. Well, he just might not have him in tears telling them about you shooting him over there last night. Well, howdy, Mr. Long. Yeah, hello, Long. Uh, gentlemen, gentlemen. How you feeling? Why, just fine. Uh, no, I ain't either. What's the matter with me? <laughs> I ain't getting along so well. I'm... Feared now them bullets is lodged in me somewhere. <laughs> oh, for goodness sake. Now, you fellas better be careful hanging around Mr. Peabody there. Eh? You're liable to get yourself shot. Yeah, I heard about you going over to Cherry Hill making that speech, trying to get votes for you. Say. Yeah, and I heard about some underhanded work you've been doing, too. Jim Weehunt told me a while ago that you arrested him yesterday for speeding and then turned him loose if he'd promised to vote for you for president. And you've been going around here all day trying to get folks to vote for you through sympathy, Yeah, too. but I ain't stooped so low as to shoot my opponent, though, just to get him out of the race. Well, now, Lum, I told you I never aimed to do that. Now, I never knowed the gun was loaded. Now, that's just the trouble. The unloaded gun is always the one that kills folks. Now, don't see how you figure that. Hadn't been loaded, why, it never would have went off. You just got that backwards wrong. Yeah, but there's been more people killed with unloaded guns than any other kind, ain't it, Dick? Yeah, that's, that's the old saying, Long. It sure is. Yeah, I never know that. After the accident yesterday, why, I'd taken all that cattered it out. And that pistol so that it couldn't go off. But if that's the way of it, why, I load it back up again. Well, now, Abner, they have to be loaded, but you've got to think they're unloaded for their danger. Well, if I loaded it myself, I'd know good and well that it weren't unloaded. Well, just forget about it. Let it go. I don't want to argue about it. (laughs) 
No, the best thing is just to be thankful neither one of you is hurt, Jesse, and forget about it. Oh, yeah. Oh, wait a minute, though. I was hurt. I'd be crippled for life over. <laughs> oh, I think you'll get along all right, love. Well, I've got to get back to the store, man. Hey, don't hurry, dear. Hey, wait a minute, Dick. I'll just go along with you. i got a list of groceries that Elizabeth wants me to fetch home tonight. Yeah, sure. Come ahead, Abner. Well, I'll see you later, love. Yeah, so long, Dick. Well, I expect I better be going, too. Mr. Abner wanted me to carry this sign a while this afternoon on the street. What sign's that? Well, that and yonder, leaning against the counter. He painted it himself. <laughs> Give me a dollar and a half a day to walk up and down the streets with it. Well, I do know. Vote for Abner Peabody for president. Hmm. Wait a minute. I've got an idea. How would you like to earn uh, another dollar and a half a day from me, Cedric? Well, the trouble is, I done promised Mr. Abner I'd work for him. Well, all he told you to do was just carry that sign, wasn't it? Yes, sir. Well, there ain't no reason for you not working for both of us at the same time. I'll just do a little more painting on that sign there, and you can make $3 a day and doing the same work. I'll just add a little to what he's got there. You see, you vote for Abner Peabody for president. I tell you, I'll just change that vote for Abner Peabody for president of the United States, but vote for Lum Edwards for president of the Jotham Down store. Well... <laughs> He, he oughtn't to have no objections to that. I, I reckon he'd rather be president of the United States than president of the jot him down store. Why, sure he has. <laughs> yeah, get me that paint and brush back there, and we'll fix that sign up right now. <laughs> well, these old fellows don't seem to stop at anything to get a few votes, do they? ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, Lum and Abner have received so many requests for those flashlights that I'll bet a lot of you are using Horlicks for the first time. Well, if that's the case, you'll be surprised to learn of the great number of uses this delicious, nourishing food drink really has. In the first place, for weight control. Try drinking a glass of Horlicks, either hot or cold, for your noonday luncheon. See how refreshing, how sustaining, how easy to digest Horlicks is. It will keep you alert. You won't have that drowsy feeling that is often caused by a heavy, hard-to-digest meal. Horlicks is a wonderful drink for the youngsters, too. Its precious vitamins and minerals help children build sturdy, healthy bodies, sound bones and teeth. I'll have a lot to tell you about other uses of Horlicks this week. Listen carefully. And now, about that offer Lum and Abner are making. You know, folks, they've received so many requests that the flashlight factory is swamped. Yeah, but every one who sent in a wrapper and ten cents will receive his flashlight as soon as they can be made. Now, if you haven't already sent for your flashlight, you'll want to do so at once. I'll tell you all about it after we hear Lum and Abner. Right? And now... Let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Lum and Abner have received enough orders for flashlights now to enable them to start restocking the Jotham Down store. Two big truckloads of merchandise has been delivered today, and the old fellows have been busy arranging it on the shelves. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Abner out on the front porch of the Jotham Down store talking to Dick Huddleston. The race for president of the new store seems to be causing some dissension between Lum and Abner. Listen. Oh, he's doing anything he can to get folks to vote for him. Like that stunt he pulled on me Saturday. If that ain't cheating, I don't know what you'd call it. I give Cedric a dollar and a half to carry that sign for me saying, vote for Peabody for president, and then Lum come along and give Cedric another dollar and a half to let him paint some more reading on the sign. Yeah, I saw Cedric carrying the sign around all day Saturday. But I thought he was carrying it for long. It had on there, vote for Abner Peabody for president of the United States and vote for Lum Edwards for president of the Jotham Down store. Yeah, that's what Lum added on there. Cedric done carried it all day before I knowed anything about it. 
Well, the uh, trouble is, Abner, you, you just haven't had enough experience in running for office. Lum's an old timer at his campaigning. He's been running for some kind of an office ever since I've known him. He's always mixed up in politics somewhere or other. Well, he's 900 and some odd votes ahead of me now and gaining every day, it looks like. Yeah, what you need is a good campaign manager, Abner. Yeah, what I need... Huh? I say, what you need is a good campaign manager. Somebody's had some experience in politics. You can get out here and get you some votes. You, you, you think that's what I ought to have, huh? Well, that's what you're going to have to have if you beat Mom. I don't get I believe that's a good idea, dude. Well, of course, I shouldn't be telling you this. I don't want to take any sides in it. Don't make no difference to me which one of you fellows is present. I just thought I'd uh, give you a little hint that way. Yeah, sure. Uh, is Lum in the store there now? Yeah, he was just now. I reckon he still is. We got in a batch of merchandise this morning, new stock for our store. Yeah, I heard that you did. That's the reason I come over. I wanted to see what kind of a stock he's putting in. Yeah, well, I took out a while ago. You'd think that Lum was already president the way he tries to boss everybody around. <laughs> well, I believe I'll go and load with him while I have him. Yeah, go ahead. I've got a little business to tend to. You give me a good idea while I go. I'll see you after a while, Dave. All right, Abner. <laughs> well, it's beginning to look like a store in here again. Huh? Oh, oh, well, howdy, Dave. <laughs> come in, come in. I thought you were busy here and never seen you come up. <laughs> yeah, well, I seen them trucks from the wholesale house go by my place this morning. I just allowed you fellas to get in your new stock. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, we ain't got all of it yet, but we're just buying a little of it along as we can. Yeah. The way folks are sending in for these flashlights, it won't be long till we can have the whole store stocked. <laughs> What's the matter? Can't you get Abner to help you there? Hmm. That's what I'm doing now, is trying to straighten out what he's already did. I run him out of here a while ago. <laughs> Everything he does, I have to do it over again, it looks like. I left it up to him to stack this canned goods in the shelf, and I just wish you'd look the way he done it. Well, for goodness sake. <laughs> just, just look at that shelf there, for instance. <laughs> yeah. Instead of stacking stuff uh, to itself like it ought to be, he's got, uh, well, there's uh, pork and beans and apricots and actual grease. There's a can of tomatoes and <laughs> bacon powders, all stacked right in together, and most of that's upside down. Yeah, I just know. <laughs> Somebody come in, call for something, it'd take you an hour and a half to find it, if you could find it at all. <laughs> well, it looks like it'd be just as easy for him to put it in there right while he's doing it. Why, sure. He just takes and opens a case or something, starts down the row of shelving, and just sets a can of it anywhere he can find a place to put it. <laughs> that's what it looks like. Just laziness is all. Says he's saving himself a lot of bother. I don't see how he figured he's saving work that way. Well, he says by scattering the stock all around over the store this way, he's got a little of everything we've got right there handy, no matter where he's at when he's waiting on a customer. That way, if somebody comes in and calls for a can of hominy or something, instead of having to walk a few steps for it, there'll be a can of it right there behind him. That is, if he can find it. <laughs> <laughs> well, bound for Abner to try to figure out some easier way to do it. <laughs> the beatingest fella I ever seen in my life for trying to study up shortcuts for getting out of work. Yeah. He'll sit and study for a half a day trying to figure out an easy way for doing something that wouldn't have took him five minutes in the first place if he just got up and done it. <laughs> well, you know, they tell it on him, Lum, that he buys his shoes about three sizes too big so he won't have to unlace them to get them on and off. <laughs> yeah, well, he does, too. <laughs> about the craziest thing he ever done is when he worked out that device for drawing water he put on his well over there. <laughs> Took him about two months to build the thing out of parts off of cultivators and old uh, hay baler and one thing and another. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that over there. And you could draw a bucket of water and have it half drunk up before you could get that contraption started working. <laughs> <laughs> Takes him and his woman and Pearl all three to work the thing. And still he insists on using it. <laughs> Thinks it's just wonderful. Shows it to everybody that comes on the plate. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's always bragging about the modern improvements he's got over there. Improvements. <laughs> <laughs> he made a self-feeder for his stock over there a few years ago. I never will forget. <laughs> Killed off three milk cows and a good horse by letting them founder themselves before his woman set her foot down and made him take it out of the barn. <laughs> well, that's the one that he got the patent on, wasn't it? Well, yeah, he tried to. Writ the giver man three or four times, drawing some pictures of it and sent them, but <laughs> they finally wrote back and said they couldn't make heads or tails of what he was driving at. <laughs> Yeah, I bet they're still trying to figure out where it was an R plane or a steam shovel or what it was. He's right. <laughs> yeah, I'd like to have seen them drawings that he sent in. <laughs> and a feller like him wanting to be president of the store here. <laughs> if he was to get elected, he'd spend half his time trying to study up some way so folks would have to wait on themselves yeah. more likely. <laughs> yeah. 
I'd like to see this store about a month after Abner had a chance to try out a few of his inventions down here. <laughs> yeah, you know, turn him loose, no telling what all he would have rigged up down here. <laughs> Be about like the time, <laughs> the time he bought that new automobile and rigged up that device to keep everybody from stealing it. No, I don't believe I heard about that. Don't you know, uh, he was feared somebody might try to steal his car out of the barn at night, so he fixed a big chef up over it and put a bunch of tin cans and a bucket and a wash tub and one thing or another, put them up on the shelf, so when they started to back the car out, they'd, they'd uh, sort of trip the shelf, and then all them tin cans and things would fall down and scare them off. For goodness sake. <laughs> he, he called it his double-action burglar alarm. Double-action? Yeah, you see... In case that noise wouldn't scare them off, he put a board full of nails behind each tire so it'd puncture them all when they tried to back the car. <laughs> <laughs> the first night he tried it out, he went out there the next morning in a big hurry and forgot about the burglar alarm himself. And about the time he he started up, them Tim cans started showering down on him and scared him so bad he just... <laughs> He just throwed her in reverse and come flying out of there and ruined all four of his tires. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, ruined three sets of casings the same way before he had sense enough to quit using it. Oh, man, that's pretty good. <laughs> let him be president down here. He'd about have a burglar alarm rigged up in the store here to catch all the customers. <laughs> yeah. uh, he was telling me a while ago, Lum, that you had a big lead on him now in your contest. Yeah, yeah. I think I've got that office and gone now. <laughs> What's worrying me now is getting these folks' flashlights to them. What's the matter? Why, we can't get the things fast enough. Well, hmm. We've got the factory working day and night now, but, call me, we're still behind. I'm just feared some of the folks are going to be getting impatient. Why, well, yeah, I, I just suppose you mail them out just as fast as the letters come in for them. Well, that's what we aim to do, but the uh, letters have been coming in faster than they can make the flashlights even. Yeah. I never knowed we had so many friends out on the party line. <laughs> well, you won't have long, Lum, if you don't get those flashlights out to them. Oh, well, they'll all get them. Every last one of them that's in in a opera will get one. I'll see to that personally. It's just going to take longer than we figured. Yeah. Well, I believe, Lum, I'd make some kind of announcement on the party line and let them know the reason for the delay if I was you. Yeah. Yeah, I expect that's the best thing to do. Yeah, I believe it would. I'll call them up after a little and explain to them that it ain't no fault of ours. Sure, I think they'll all understand, just so they don't think, you know, that you've forgotten about it. Yeah, I hate it the worst way, especially after they're so nice to write in this way. You know? Yeah, sure, I know you do. Well, if everybody else is as well pleased with theirs when they get it as I am mine, well, it'll be worth waiting for. Well, well, right. Here comes Abner back. I <laughs> know he's mad. He got mad a while ago and stomped out of here because I jumped on him about the way he was stacking that stuff in the shelves. <laughs> yeah, I saw him out there. That's coming in a while ago. <laughs> now, you fellas ought to be wrangling this way, though, Lon. I'm afraid this contest you're having, letting the public vote on which one of you is going to be president of your store when you get it opened up, is going to cause you fellas to have a falling out. Oh, no, no, no. It'll all blow over again. Election's over, and having her sees that I ain't the only one that thinks I ought to be president. Hey, Lum. Lum, I'm going to take the rest of the afternoon off. I've got to go into the county seat and have some pictures made. Have some pictures made? Yeah. Well, for goodness sake. I never would have thought you'd want to have a picture made of that face of yours. Look to me like you'd be proud to forget what you look like. <laughs> well, my campaign manager said that he needs some pictures of me for publicity. Your campaign manager? Yes, sir. I've got a man that guarantees to get me elected. I know that this contest is going to be a heap different story from here out, Lom. He's a go-getter. Who you got managing your campaign? Well, I just a while ago made a deal with Squire Skimp. He's going to take charge from here out. I don't guess Squire Skimp knows more tricks about getting votes than any two fellas in this whole thing. <laughs> Well, knowing Squire Skimp as we do, we can expect a whirlwind finish in this campaign for president. to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. I wonder if gasoline makes the difference in your car that it makes in mine. 
When I use good gasoline, that car of mine starts with a touch. On even the coldest morning. But the other day, I yielded to the temptation to try and get a bargain. I filled my tank with cheap gasoline. What a time I had starting that car the next morning. Now, cheap gasoline may look just like good gasoline when it comes out of the hose. But there is some difference in results. Well, there's a difference in malted milk, too. A cheap imitation may look like Horlicks. But that doesn't mean that it's just as good as Horlicks. Not at all. Now, a lot of those imitations are just mechanical mixtures. Skim milk and inferior malt powder and uncooked cocoa. And there may be as much as 50% ordinary sugar in that mixture. Now, Horlicks is rich in the nourishment that your body needs. It is made from only rich, full cream milk. This is blended with extracts of select malted grains. For flavor, for results, there isn't any substitute for Horlicks. And now I have a special message from Lum and Abner. They want me to tell you that they've received so many requests for the flashlights they're offering that the factory can't make them quickly enough. But everyone who sent in a wrapper and ten cents will receive his flashlight just as soon as it can be made. Now, if you haven't already sent in for your flashlight, you'll want to do so at once. The offer is being withdrawn very soon. I'll tell you how to get one after we hear Lama Dam. Now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Lum and Abner's contest over who will be elected president of their new store is winding up in a whirlwind finish. For the past several days now, Lum has been leading by several hundred votes. But yesterday, Abner announced that he had made a deal with Squire Skimp to act as his campaign manager. And the latest count is that the old fellows are about even in the race. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Cedric down at their store arranging the new stock of merchandise on the shelves. Listen. I've got all them canned goods stacked up on the shelves now, Mr. Long. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, looking right nice, Eddie. Now you better take and sweep out the feed room back there and get it all ready for the flour and feed I ordered. I ought to be out here in the morning. Yes, Mom. There's some loose chops scattered around on the floor back there. Just sweep them up and sack them. I'll carry them over the place there and feed them to the chickens. Well, I thought you said you wanted me to hang up them horse collars and them lanterns on the back wall yonder next. Yeah, that's right. You ain't got two that yet, have you? Hey, there's some collar pads back there that ought to be hung up, too. But just let that go, though. Better get that feed room cleaned up first. I'm going to have it all ready so when they fetch it out, we can just stack it right off in the truck, save us handling it twice. Yes, Mom. <laughs> well, I do know. <laughs> ain't that Mr. Abner coming up down there? Where? Well, for the land sake. <laughs> now, where do you reckon he got such a get-up as that? Uh, I don't know, but he's sure dressed up, ain't he? First time I ever seen him with a derby on. Now, I bound you it ain't his, neither. Look at the way it sets down on his ears there. <laughs> Looks like somebody took and turned a wash biler and turned it upside down or on his head. Uh, I bound you, though, he's a-getting votes. That's more like the reason he's a dressed up. Yeah. Looks more like he's going to a masquerade party somewhere. Look at him, Strut. Reared back there like a turkey gobbler. I feared him getting so many votes in that mail this morning was going to his head. Uh, he, he said he was ahead of you now in the election. Yeah, three votes. Just uh, just ahead three votes, and to hear him tell it, he's done win the office. Hey, has Squire Skip been down here looking for me? No, I ain't saw him, and that ain't all I don't want to, neither. Well, he said he'd meet me down here. Now, if you're bound and determined to associate with Squire Skimp, Abner, I wish you'd meet him somewhere else. I don't want him hanging around down here at the store. Well, now, this is just as much my store as it is yours, Lom, and if I want to meet him down here, it's my own business. Yeah, all right, but when he comes down here, I'm a-leaving. He ain't nothing but a snake in the weeds. Cedric, there ain't no use for you to stand there with your mouth gapped open. Get on back there and clean up the feed room like I told you. Yes, ma'am. Uh, here, wait a minute, Cedric. Have a cigar. Oh, that's right, you don't smoke it. Well, I'll give it to you, Paul, and tell him to vote for me, Cedric. Oh, much obliged, Mr. Abner. Oh, not at all, not at all, Cedric, not at all. Granny, you're getting sort of generous all of a sudden, ain't you? Passing out cigars. Yeah, that's part of my campaign. <laughs> well, is that outfit you've got on there part of your campaign, too? Yeah, uh, Squire says I ought to dress myself up. Uh, well, the fact is, he left me this derby in the best I've got on. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd saw that striped vest before. Yeah. <laughs> Squire Skimp has used that vest to campaign in for the last 15 years. Let me see. Yeah, yeah it's one arm holds his war threadbare there where he took his thumbs in them rearing back. Hmm. 
Looks more like an apron on you than it does a vest, though. Yeah, well, it's a little full, all right. I reckon I ought to get a pillar and stuff up under there. Yeah, the feller's got to dress himself up like a scarecrow to get votes. I grant it, I don't want the office. Well, it's a working, or at least ways I'm ahead now. <laughs> Squire says we'll beat you two to one for it's over long. <laughs> Well, Abner, if you could get out here and beat me fair and square, I wouldn't mind it. I'd be the first one to walk up and shake your hand, but I'd just hate to see you get tangled up with a feller like Squire Skim. Looks to me like you'd learn by now to stay away from him. Yeah, well, now, Squire knows politics. You just ought to hear some of the stunts that he's got studied up for me to do. Yeah, I know Squire'd do anything to see me get beat. Me and him's butted heads with one another ever since I first run for justice of peace. And this is his way of getting even with me. You want to mind out now he don't get you in a batch of trouble. Now, don't you worry about me and Squire. Well, Abner, he ain't going to get out here and work you this away for nothing. I'll tell you that right now. He's got some scheme in the back of his head right now for making something out of it. Why, sure he's going to make something out of it. I'm paying him ten cents on all I make. Ten cents? Yes, sir, ten cents. I've got it wrote right here in the contract with her name signed to it and everything. Let's see it. See what you signed your name to there. There it is, right there. Squire's got one just like it, too. Mm, to who it may concern, I, Abner Peabody, herein after referred to as party of the first part, do hereby agree to pay to M.K. Skimp, herein after referred to as party of the second part, 10% on all earnings from this date until party of second part sees fit to cancel the agreement. And you signed this? Yes, sir. I made him sign it, too. Made him sign Yes, sir. Mm, and you want to be president of the Jotham Down store. Abner, I'm going to have to get out here and beat you to protect both of us. This proves right here that you'd bankrupt both of us if you ever got to be president of the store. What's the matter with you? Well, well, there ain't no use for me to try to explain it to you. You've done signed it anyway. But you'll find out before he gets done with you that 10% and 10 cents is two different things. Yeah, I know what you're trying to do, Long. Just trying to get me it out for Squire so that I won't have him to help me in my campaign. Mm, Right, all right. Go ahead, go ahead. I ain't having a thing to do with it. Well, I don't want you to. You run your end of it, and I'll attend to mine. All right. Being you're going to attend to all your affairs, you can just take a $200 check back to the insurance company in there at the county seat. Want me to take it back? You can take it back just as well as I can. Well, here, I don't want to take it back in there and have to explain to them that that accident they paid me on was a fake. They think I was crazy. Just handle it to suit yourself, but if it was me, I'd take it into the bank and cash it and just mail the money to them, not tell them where it come from. That way, they'll get their money back and your conscience will be clear. Yeah, I could do that, I reckon. Well, yeah. Better put it up. Here comes Grandpappy Spears and Dick Hudderston. Grandpappy don't know nothing about it, you know. No, and if he ever found out about it, he'd tell it all over town, old gossip. Well, Abner, I just hope there ain't no hard feelings developed out of this contest, but I'm warning you right now, I'm going after that office. I've got to do it. Well, Heidi, Heidi, come in, gentlemen. Howdy, uh, fellas. Come on back. Yeah, come in, come in. Yeah, sort of looking like old times in here, them, them groceries scattered around on them shelves. Yeah, you've got some more stock in here today, haven't you? Yeah, we're buying it along as we can. Uh, when you aiming on opening up for business, Tom? Um? Why, about next Monday, I reckon, Grandpap. We've got to wait till after the election to find out who's going to be the president, you know. But, George, you're kind of dressed up today, ain't you, Abner? Yeah, a little, I reckon. <laughs> Fella run for office this way, you know. He's got to dress himself up a little, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's some of Squire Skimp's ideas there. He's Abner's campaign manager now, you know. Yeah, I know. I heard that. I dog it, he can get the vote, too. That feller's got a head this plum chuck full of ideas. Things are going to start happening around here in the next day or two. Why, uh, Lom, what me and Grandpap come over for, uh, we're having a meeting of the school board down at my store in a few minutes, and uh, we wanted you to be there. Well, you don't reckon I've got no business at one of their meetings since they kicked me out as president of the board. Well, now, that's what the meeting is called for, Lom. We'd, uh... Like you would take that office back if you'll accept it. Yeah, Lum, uh, all us board members sees now where we acted a little hasty when we asked you to resign. Sure, sure we do, Lum. Come on down to meeting anyway. The whole bunch wants to talk to you. Well, I don't reckon it'll do no harm to go down there. Abner, you can look after things here for a while. I'll be back as soon as it's over. Yeah, sure, go ahead, yeah. Back directly, then. Yeah, here, here comes your campaign manager up out here. Yeah, well, tell him to come on in. Yeah, howdy, Squire. Well, howdy, gentlemen, howdy. Now, Abner's inside the store there, Squire. Yeah, yeah, yeah thank you, Lom. Uh, well, right nice weather we're having. Yes, yeah, it is. Come on, Squire, come on in. I've been waiting for you. Uh, yes, uh, well, I got held up downtown there, Abner. I 
been doing a little campaigning for you down there. Well, fine, fine. Now, uh, Abner, uh, what I want to see you about, uh, I've been making a few plans on your campaign. I've uh, made arrangements for you to give a speech at a box up over at Crystal Hill tomorrow night. At Crystal Hill, huh? Uh, what am I supposed to talk about? Mm, well, it uh, don't make much difference about that. Uh, the New Deal or the gold standard or anything. Uh, just so that you asked them sometime during the speech to uh, vote for you for president of the store here. Now, uh, I'm getting things all lined up. I've uh, got to go in the county seat this afternoon and uh, get some window cards printed and one thing or another. Well, I wish I'd known you were going. I'd have went with you. I I've got a check that I need to cash in there off of Uh, a check, huh? Well, now, it might be that I can uh, tend to that for you, Abner, if you want me to. Yeah, why, sure, yeah. I never thought about that. <laughs> Well, I'll uh, have to sign my name on the back of it here, and then you can just get the cash for me, Squire. It's uh, that insurance check for $200 I got when my arms were broke. Well, $200, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, well, I'll be glad to tend to it for you, Abner. Uh, us being such old friends and all, you know, and now uh, just uh, endorse it there, and uh, ain't no need for you to go in tall. Uh, uh, here, here, wait just a minute. Uh, here's my fountain pen. Just use that, Abner. Yes, sir. We imagine Squire is only too glad to handle this little transaction for Abner. Here we are, all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Well, how do all you radio listeners feel tonight with the day's work well behind you? Full of pep for the evening ahead? Or tired out and ready for bed? A lot depends, of course, on how well you slept last night. You know, people often think they're tired at night because of the work they've done in the day. Well, that's partly the reason, of course, but really, your evening's enjoyment hangs on how soundly you slept the night before. Every one of us needs plenty of sound, restful sleep every night. And here's a tip that'll help you to get it. Just before going to bed, treat yourself to a glass of delicious Horlicks malted milk, hot. As you slip between sheets that are suddenly cool and inviting, you'll notice how soothed and relaxed you feel. Without any effort, you'll quietly slip off to sleep. Sound, continuous sleep that really rests and refreshes. Sleep that gives you a feeling of fitness. Try a glass full of hot Horlicks malted milk before you go to bed tonight. You'll be surprised how it'll help you to get so much more out of life. And remember now, there's still time to send in for one of Lum and Abner's handy fountain pen size flashlights. If you haven't already done so, but you'll have to hurry. The offer ends midnight Sunday. I'll tell you all about it after we hear Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Since Abner hired Squire Skimp to act as his campaign manager, interest in the election of a president of the Jotham Down store has really picked up down in Pine Ridge. Squire has devised all sorts of campaign stunts for publicity. And Abner is gaining votes by leaps and bounds. As we look in on Pine Ridge today... We find Dick Huddleston over at the Jotham Down store talking with Lum. Listen. Yeah, but now you can't make any money Lum selling stuff at cost that way. Selling it at cost? Yeah, that's what Abner's telling around. He was down at the barber shop this morning telling a crowd of fellas in there that if they elected him president of the store over here, he'd see if they got their groceries at cost. Well, I'll be dead blamed. Hmm. Well, no wonder he's been getting so many votes the last few days, telling such stories as that around. Squire Skimp's been out lectioneering for him, and he's been telling the same story, telling folks how much money they can save by electing Abner president. Mm -hmm. Well, that's more than likely where Abner got the idea. Squire Skimp put them notions in his head, I bound you. Well, don't you worry about us selling stuff at cost, Dick. We're going to make a profit on it. I don't care who's president. Well, I'm glad to hear you say that, Lum. We've 
always been competitors in the store business, but we've always gotten along all right. Why, sure, and we aim to keep on getting along all That's right. That's the thing to do. Just sure. don't pay no attention to nothing Abner says. I'll sworn he'll do or say anything that Squire Skimp tells him to. Of all people he could have picked out for a campaign manager, he had to pick out a fella like him. Yeah, yeah, I was uh, sorry to see Abner get lined up with Squire. Old Squire's liable to get him in batch of trouble before he knows it if he don't watch out. Yeah, I tried to tell Abner, but he wouldn't listen. Squire's a sort of a feller when you first meet him, you you don't like him so well, but after you get to knowing him better, why, well, you can't stand him at all. What? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's about right, Mom. Well, he's got Abner so worked up over this election, he'll do anything to get a few votes. Yeah. Uh, you know that uh, net uh, volunteer fire department bought with that money they raised off in the box supper they had here a while back? Well, I didn't know that they'd got it yet. Yeah, yeah, a safety net they bought. Yeah. Well, it come in yesterday, so <laughs> Squire made arrangements with the fire boys to have Abner test it out for them. Abner clumb up in the belfry over at the schoolhouse during recess this morning and jumped clean off in the building into the net. Well, what does I didn't do that? Why, the Squire told him it'd be good publicity, and Abner didn't have no more sense than to do it. <laughs> See, all the young'uns gathered around him there to see if he got hurt, and Abner stood up there in the net and made some sort of a little speech to him about voting for him for president. Mm. Well, by Jack, that's right. Uh, children can vote in this election, same as the grown-ups, can't they? Oh, yeah. 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 We've got a lot of roppers from children. They listen in on the party line, too, you know. Yeah, sure. Well, um, it just looks like that Abner's going to run away at this election if you don't get out here and do something. He's got a bunch of window cards out now, I Brung one down the store this morning, wanted me to set it in the window down there. Yeah, yeah, I've seen some of them. Seen one down at the barbershop this morning. Yeah, there's one down there. <laughs> that picture you got on there of yourself ought to be good for ridding your store of rats or cockroaches if he's bothered with such <laughs> an <laughs> uh, Did you see that write-up that he had in the county paper this morning? Write-up? No. What'd they say about him? Why, according to the paper, he made a big contribution to the public library in there at the county seat. You mean a donate? Yeah, he gave him $180. Oh, get out. He ain't got that much money. Well, I don't know where he got it, but evidently he gave it to them, or they wouldn't have had a write-up like that in the paper. Oh, big headlines in there. Prominent Pine Ridge citizen made the liberal donation to local public library, or something like that, it said. And went on to say that uh, he'd like for everybody to send in for a flashlight and vote for him for president of the John and Down store. Well, for goodness sakes, a hundred and eighty dollars. That's what it says. Where did he get that much money? <laughs> Man, he could have bought me out of the race for that much money. I'd have took clean out and let him have the oil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I don't see how that's going to help him get many votes. Well, wait a minute, that. Dick. Uh, that's our range. Excuse me. Oh, sure. Go ahead and answer it. Yeah, sure. Hello? This is Lum Edwards talking. Yes, Mom, he's here. Uh, do you want to talk to him? Oh. Yes, Mom. Yes, Mom, I sure will, Miss Huddleston. All right. <laughs> All right, goodbye. Your woman says Elmer Luttrell's over there at your store waiting to see you, Dave. By jacks, I forgot about that, sure. Yeah, well, I'll have to get on over there, Lum. I'm trying to sell Elmer that 80 acres down there on the river that I swapped for last spring. Well, I'm glad you come over, Dick. And, and don't you worry about us selling stuff at cost. I can tell you right now, there ain't nothing to that. Oh, yeah, well, that's all right, Lum. I figured there must have been some mistake about it. Hey, here comes Abner, Lum. Abner? Yeah. Granny, it's about time he's getting back. Yeah, hi, Dick. Well, hello, Abner. Hey, leave it. Yeah, I've got to get on back over the store, Abner. They're just not called up for me. Well, be sure and tell everybody you see the vote for me for president. <laughs> All right, Abner. Hey, howdy, Lom. Uh, did you hear about me jumping off in the schoolhouse? Yeah, I heard about it. <laughs> Too bad they had that net down there to catch you. Yeah, I'm sorry for I've been gone so long. I, I've been uh, busy uh, figuring myself out a speech for tonight. <laughs> a speech? Uh, you know, I'm going to speech over at Crystal Hill tonight. Yeah, hmm. I'd love to hear that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Body could learn a lot hearing you give a talk about you. And I, I'm going to give my views on this here, uh, this uh, gold situation. Gold situation? Yeah, Mose Moots down at the barbershop uh, said that the paper is full of that now. Yeah, well, you don't know nothing about the gold situation, Abner. Inflating it and de-inflating it and all that stuff. Why, no, no. That's the reason that uh, he said that it'd be a good subject for me to speak on. 
said that uh, nobody else knows anything about it neither, Lom, I mean, uh, they won't know where I'm right or wrong. Yeah. And, of course, you know, after I speak for a while, I, uh, I'm going to sort of bring it in in a uh, roundabout way, you know. I'm uh, going to ask them all to vote for me for president of the store. That's oh. the reason I'm going over Squire. Uh, I see. Like, That's some of Squire Skimp's idea. Yeah, yeah, Squire told me to go over there and speak on anything I wanted to, just so I brought it in sometime for them to vote for me. Well, now, Abner, there ain't nothing you won't do to get votes, is it? No, well, I... Don't know as I'd go so far as to say that. Uh, might be something. I don't know. You've been going around here telling that if you get elected president, you're going to sell everybody the groceries it cost, ain't you? Who said I've been doing that? Why, Dick Huddleston. He heard you down to barbershop this morning. That's what he's doing over here just now. He's mad about it. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> well, uh, I, I just, uh, I just been telling folks that long. <laughs> Natural, I don't aim to do it, no. I'd be ashamed to admit to it, going around making promises that you don't aim to keep. Oh, well, Squire said just tell them anything to get both. Campaign promises don't mean nothing to nobody. Nobody never keeps them no how. Well, I ain't going to stand back and let you promise a lot of stuff about the store here that you don't aim to do. Well, now, you just tend to your own campaign. Me and Squire look after mine. I told you that I didn't care what you done. Do or say anything that you want to. I don't want you trying to tell me what to do, neither. All right. I'm glad we got ourselves straight on it. Well, just that's just right. Just then. What's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. I don't care. Huh? I say, what's sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, I mean, what's sauce for you is sauce for me. Oh. Oh, changing it up, huh? Just now, you was talking about geese. Well, I meant you, though. You mean to sit there and call me a goose to my face? I never called you nothing. I just said what sauce for the goose is sauce for the gander. What kind of sauce? What are you talking about? Nothing, nothing. Just let it go. You are too. I heard you. You said something about me and I can't figure out what it was. Well, I will say something about you showing up if you don't shut up. You're going around here with your peelings out on a stick here, man. Well, now, nobody ain't going to set up and call me no goose. I, I never you. called you no goose. Abner, if you don't shut up, I'm going to whop you one. Well, now. you can just go jump in the lake. That's who you are, and I'm the man that can do it, too. Going around here giving $180 to a library just to get votes. Well, that's my own business if I want to... Huh? I give $180 to what? To the library in there at the county seat. Who done that? You did. Why, well, I never done no such a thing. Abner, there ain't no use to deny it now. Don't you store it to him. It was in the paper and everything. Well, now, listen, Lom. I know what I did and what I ain't did. I ain't got $180 in the first place or second place. Well, either, where, where'd place. the money come from then? The paper come out with the article today saying you made a donate to the public library in there. Uh, Wait a minute. What did you do with that check for $200 the insurance company give you? Uh, oh, why, well, uh, I'll give it to Squire Skimp to cash for me. He was going into the county seat yesterday, and I, 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 doggies, wait a minute here. I've got to go find my campaign manager. There's something wrong here someplace, Tommy. There's something wrong. <laughs> you don't suppose Squire has used that insurance money in behalf of Abner's campaign? to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. You know, every day we get lots of letters from grateful mothers who've reared their children on Horlicks. Here's a typical one from Columbus, Indiana, written by Mrs. S.H. Let's hear what she says. I've always wanted to write and tell you how wonderful I think Horlicks malted milk is and what it did for my son. When he was only three months old, he was very, very sick with a child's ailment. They told us that he would never recover. But he did. With the best of care, he finally pulled through. But he was very delicate still. No nourishment seemed to be right. The little fellow just couldn't hold any food. Our hearts grew heavy, and we began to lose hope. Well, finally, 
It was suggested that we get a small bottle of Horlick's malted milk and try that. Well, we did, and it was wonderful from the very start. The baby was able to digest it easily. It wasn't long before he began to grow stronger, and he improved steadily. Naturally, we are great boosters for Horlicks now. Well, thank you, Mrs. S.H. The makers of Horlicks are very glad to hear of your experience. They hope other mothers may hear of it and profit from your experience and from Horlicks malted milk. And now, folks, if you haven't already sent in for one of Lum and Abner's flashlights, it's still not too late. But it will be soon, so act now, tonight. I'll tell you what to do after we hear Lum and Abner. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Abner hasn't seen Squire Skimp since he entrusted him with a check for $200 to cash for him day before yesterday. A story appeared in yesterday's county paper stating that Abner Peabody had made a donation of $180 to the public library at the county seat. And Abner's afraid now that that's where his money went. Well, as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum down at the Juddam Down store, which is soon to be open to the public again. Abner is just entering the front door. Listen. Well, did you find Squire Abner? No, I couldn't locate him, Lum, but I found out that that's where that $200 went all right. You did? You, you know for sure now, huh? Yeah, I know it did. I called up a newspaper in there at the county seat and asked them how come to put in a paper that I donated $180 to the library. Yeah, and what did they say? Well, they said that Squire Skimp gave them the money in my name. Well, that's just what I figured happened, quick as you told me you got Squire to take that check in there and cash it for you. Well, yeah, I know it. That's that insurance money. That weren't my money. I didn't even on giving it back to the insurance company. Well, you've got to get it back to the insurance company some way or other. If they find out that you accepted $200 from them on that claim that when you weren't even hurt, they can send you the penitentiary just as sure as you're standing there. Yeah, I know it, but I ain't got no $200 to give them. I couldn't raise that much money if my life depended on it. You wear into it now, sure enough. Well, I just feared something like this would happen if you got Squire Skimp to run your campaign for you. I told you he'd about get you in a batch of trouble if you got tied up with him. Yeah, Dad blame his soul. If I can find him, I'll jail him for spending my money. I'll make him dig that up. I have to lawsuit him to the high court. Well, now, I don't know, Abner. Squire ain't done nothing again the law the way I see it. Well, I'd like to know why he ain't taking my money and giving it away for something that I never even know nothing about. Yeah, but the only thing you could get him for would be bezelments, and he ain't bezel nothing. He give him the money in your name, you know. Well, now, there ought to be some law against somebody... Uh, spend another feller's money that way, unbeknownst to him. Well, he's your campaign manager, and he can claim he's doing it to help you get votes. Well, he can't do that, though. Well, he did do it. Yeah, that's right, he did, didn't he? Yeah, he's got that contract you signed making him your campaign manager. There's where you made the biggest mistake. When you signed that agreement to pay him any such amount as that to help you. Well, I never minded that. Law me, it ought to be worth ten cents for him to get me elected. And if I ain't elected, why, well, I don't owe him nothing. Well, uh, Abner, you're all mixed up on that contract. I can tell you that right now. No, I ain't neither. If I ain't elected, I don't owe him a cent. I ain't talking about that, though. I mean that ten cents business. That contract says you've got to pay him ten percent of all your earnings if you're elected. Yeah. Well, ten percent and ten cents is a heap different. Ten percent don't mean ten cents. It means ten cents on every dollar you make. Yeah, but he never said 10% on every dollar. He said 10% on the whole business. That's what he said. Well, that's the same thing. Why, no. If I was to pay him 10 cents on every dollar, why, well, if I was to make $10, why, I'd have to pay him 10 cents on every one of them. Yeah. Yeah, but this way, I don't have to pay him but 10 cents on the whole $10. Well, you just got yourself mixed up. No, I ain't neither. Well, I seen the contract, and it said you'd pay him 10% of all you make. Yes, sir. If you make $10, you owe him a dollar. If you make $100, you've got to give him 10 of it. Oh. $200, you don't him 20. According to the contract, you've got to keep on paying him until he releases you. He might make you pay him 10% for the rest of your life. Well, I wouldn't do it. I'd just quit work first. Yeah, that's what I'd fix him. So I'm ain't so smart, I'd just quit work. And what would you live on all that time? Why, I'd, uh, I, uh... You've got to keep working, Abner. You've got to make a living. 
Yeah, but I'll be dead blamed if I'm going to make a living for me and him both. Now, I'll just work as cheap as I can. That's what I'll do, so I won't have to pay no more than I have to. Just work for about a half what well, I ought to get. You better try to make more money than you have been making, as long as you're going to have to divide it up with him. Yeah, but the more I make, the more I have to pay him. Well, I can't explain it to you. You ought to have had more sense than to sign anything like that to begin with, Abner. So when you're getting to where you'll sign your name to anything anybody sticks under your nose. Yeah, I know it. I'd be a heap better off if I never had learned how to write my name. Keep myself in hot water all the time. Yeah. Looks like I'd learn better. I do know better, but I just won't listen to myself, looks like. I get so uh, aggravated with me sometimes I could run myself out of town. I, I just wished I could get away from myself for a while. And just whiff myself so much, looks like. I just won't pay no attention to nothing I say no more. Yeah, you got yourself into it now, all right. Yeah, but if I can find Squire Skimp, I'll tell him a thing or two. Well, that ain't going to do no good. Ain't going to get you your money back. What you better be doing is figure out some way to raise that $200. Well, of course, if I can see Squire, I can get part of it back. I want to catch him before he gives that $20 to somebody else, too. Makes another donate for me. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out somewhere where we can raise $200. Well, we can raise it. Well, I'm going to help you if I can. I thought you was mad at me over this election. You've been acting like it. Well, I reckon I thought I was. I, I didn't much like some of the stunts you done in the race, Abner, but I don't know. When it comes down to something like this, uh, well, you, you get in a batch of trouble, I want to help you if I can. I ain't nothing personal about it. I don't want you to think that I like you or anything like that, but recollect now, if that insurance company finds out that that accident was a fake, uh, that you wasn't sure enough hurt, they, they might could get me for being an access to the crime. You know, I was the one that thought up the idea of you making out like you had an accident in the first place. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Well, that's the reason I'm thinking about it. Well, I hate to get you in any trouble, Ward, Mom. Reckon if I'd write to that, uh, that public library or whatever it was that Squire gave the money to and told him that he give it unbeknownst to me and I want it back, he reckon he'd send it to me? Well, I don't know. They might. I, I don't think that'd be the thing to do, though, Abner. Make them a donate and then make them give it back. Well, I don't see why I never give it to them in the first place. Yeah, but they think you did. Wrote that story about you. More likely come out with another story in the paper telling that you took the money back then. Well, I don't care what they put in the paper about me as long as I get the money back and pay it back to the insurance company. Well, I'd run you in there in this lecture note or the whole town would turn again. Well, I don't care about that neither. I'm trying to figure out a way to get that money back to the insurance company and I ain't going to rest till I do. That might be the best way out of it, all right. Just write the library a nice letter and explain the whole thing to them. I reckon they'd send it back to you. Uh -huh. But I'm telling you now, it will ruin you at the county seat. Uh, you wouldn't get a vote in there. Well, you ought to be glad of that, then. Well, I'd love to win the election, or I'd love to be president the worst way, but I won't appeal like I win at fair and square. Wait a minute. Uh -huh. Look, you Where? Coming up out front there. There's your campaign manager for you. Yeah. I dog it if I don't tell him a thing or now, two. Don't say nothing about that 10% business, that contract. I'm going to study up some way to get you out of that if I can. So don't let on like it's a worry, you know. Yeah, well, what I'm after, that $20, if he still got it. Yeah, get that if you can. Well, howdy, Squire. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Come on back. Yeah, I want to talk to you, Squire. I've been looking for you ever since yesterday. Yeah, where you been? Well, uh, yes, uh, the little wife told me that you'd been over to the place, Abner. Uh, you see, I've been out there uh, campaigning for you, uh, Tell you, Abner, we're going to have a landslide. We'll win this election by... Oh, uh, excuse me, Lum. I forgot the opponent was sitting right here with me. All right, all right. Don't mind me. Just go right ahead on. Well, what I want to know is where is that $200 for that check that I gave you the cash for me the other day? Yeah. Well, uh, I'll tell you, Abner, now, uh, that's just what I come over for. Uh, I seen an opportunity the other day to do a lot of good and get you a lot of votes at the same time. So, as your campaign manager, I donated the $200 to the public library in there at the county seat. $200? The newspaper just said $180. Well, 
Hmm. Uh, well, uh, yes, yes. Now, I believe that's what it comes to. You see, according to the contract, I get 10% of all your earnings, Abner, and that 10% of $200 would be $20. Yes, uh, the newspaper write about it. That's what it was left, $180, yes. Well, according to that contract, Squire, you don't get 10% less than Abner's elected president of the store here. <laughs> oh, well, uh, he's good at elected right now. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm writing that library in their letter right this afternoon and tell them that you give them that money unbeknownst to me and I want it back. Oh, well, here now, Abner, now, for goodness sake, now, don't do that. That ruiner says sure the world. Why, why, the whole county turned against us here. Well, I don't care if they do. I know what's right and what's wrong. That money belongs to the insurance company, not to me. My dog is I'm going to take it back to them, even if I lose a race. Now then, give me that twenty dollars right now. Yeah. Well, now here, now Abner, now wait a minute. Now uh, we better uh, better talk this whole thing over. You know what? Being such old friends. Old oh, friends, old to... friends, nothing. I'm tired of hearing that. I granny, you give Abner that twenty dollars right now, or we'll take it away from you. Here, Abner, grab that arm over there. Uh, Grannies, we'll either get that twenty dollars, or we'll take it out of your hide. <laughs> Well, this looks like one deal that the squire won't be able to put over on the old fellows. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner, brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. Folks, if you're going to get one of Lum and Abner's swell little flashlights, you've got to act at once, right away. The offer ends midnight Sunday. Your request must be in the mail by then. Don't forget that date, midnight Sunday. Now here's what to do. Just write your name and address on the back of the outside wrapper from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder and send it, enclosing 10 cents to cover mailing and packing costs, to Lum and Abner, care of the station to which you are now listening. You got that? But remember, it must be the outside wrapper and from a package of Horlicks malted milk powder. Horlicks tablets wrappers, I mean, are not eligible. It takes only a couple of minutes to send in... If you don't happen to have a wrapper handy, get a package of Horlicks malted milk powder, either natural or chocolate flavor, from your druggist tonight. But don't forget, your request must be in the mail before midnight Sunday. So send in right away, before you're too late. Lum and Abner will personally appreciate your sending in for one of their flashlights. So write your name and address on a Horlicks malted milk powder wrapper and send it in with your dime tonight. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, Abner and his campaign manager, Squire Skimp, had a falling out yesterday. He discovered that Squire had used the money from the insurance company to make a donation to the public library at the county seat, and has written a letter to the library demanding the money back so that he can return it to the insurance company. The newspaper has come out with a very caustic story about it today, criticizing Abner severely. As we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Dick Huddleston over at the Jotham Down store showing Lum the story that appeared in today's paper. Listen. Well, I do know. <laughs> well, I hate to see him print an article like that about Abner. Well, I don't know, Lum. You can't blame them much, you know. Somebody make a donation that way just for the publicity and... And if he gets a nice write-up in the paper, well, I ask for his money back. Well, Abner couldn't do nothing else, though. He had to get it back. You know that check the insurance company gave Abner for $200 on that accident claim? Yeah, I thought you sent it back to him. Well, we was going to. Abner gave it to Squire Skimp to take into the county seat to get it cash so he could send the money instead of the check back to him. Yeah. And while he's in town there, Squire made that donate to the library for Abner. 
figured he'd help him in his campaign for president of the store here. Oh, that's where that money come from, huh? Yeah, Squire just taking it on himself to give him $180 on it. And tried to keep the other $20 for himself. But we, we got him down in here yesterday and taken it away from him. He did? Yeah, he <laughs> stood there and said he never had a cent on him. And granny, if we throwed him down and wrenched in his pocket and pulled out a roll of bills there, they'd choke a cow. <laughs> well, good for you, Lum. I'm glad to hear it. <laughs> oh, he got mad, just frothed at the mouth. Stomped out of here mad enough to bite. Well, he's out again today, electioneering for Abner. He's down at the store this morning, telling a big bunch of them in there to be sure and vote for Abner. Well, yeah, he's still trying to get Abner elected, all right. You see, he's got a contract with Abner that says if he's elected president of the store here, Squire gets 10% of everything Abner makes. Oh. And if Abner ain't elected, why, he don't get nothing, huh? No. Well, uh, how long does that contract run, Lum, this uh, 10% business? Well, now, there's another thing. There ain't no limit set on it. Just runs as long as Squire wants it to, I reckon. Mm -hmm. See, Abner was so anxious to get to be president, he'd have signed anything. Why, sure. Uh, well, uh, when does this uh, contest close? Uh, Sunday night. Sunday, Sunday night. night at midnight. When we open up for business Monday morning, we'll know then who's going to be the president. Yeah. And it looks like Abner's going to be it, the way these votes have been coming in today. He's 780-some-odd votes ahead of me now. Yeah. <laughs> well, I imagine, old Lama, people in there at the county seat will all be voting for you now since this article come out in the paper today. That'll swing all the votes to your side. Yeah, I sort of hate that, too. Hate to see him turn again Abner when he's trying to do the honest thing. I uh, can't help but feel just sort of sorrowful for him. Well, it'd be a blessing if he was to get beat, Mom. He wouldn't have to pay his squire that 10% the rest of his life. Yeah, but he'd be terrible disappointed, Dick. He wants to be president so bad. Yeah, I know he does. Now, I come right now withdrawing from the race yesterday and just letting Abner have the office, but I got to thinking he'd be sure to win that away, and squire would claim 10% of everything he makes. So. Yeah. I just decided to let it work itself out the best way it would. Yeah, well, you're in kind of a bad spot there, Lum, either way you turn. You're sort of twitched a hard place in a rock. <laughs> well, this contest has showed me one thing. Showed me where I stand at. <laughs> sort of took me down a notch or two, I reckon. You know, I, I thought when we started this thing, he'd be a runaway for me. I never figured Abner'd get any votes at all. <laughs> well, he's led the race nearly all the way through, though, hasn't he? Yeah, except for two or three days there. But uh, I ain't complaining none. You see, the folks that sent in for the flashlights, the uh, ones that's done the voting in this thing, has been responsible for us getting our store stocked up again. We can just thank them for that. Yeah, yeah, you've got a nice stock of merchandise there now, Mom. Looks mighty nice, too. Yeah, I thought so. Me and Cedric's been busy all week arranging it on the shelves and all. That's well, looking fine. Nice, clean stock of merchandise. I can't hardly wait till Monday to get opened up for business. Regardless of which one of us gets elected, we've got a fresh start in the store business. Yeah. Well, that's a good idea you had getting that agency for those flashlights. And it was my nice Mr. Harlick to offer to send them out to your friends, too. Oh, yeah, it sure was. I, I just hate it because we can't get them made any faster, though. They're running that flashlight factory day and night now, making them just fast as they can, but it's, it's going to be a little time yet before some of them get them. Well, you told them on the party line the other day that there'd be some delay, so... I don't think you'll have any complaints over it. I hope not. Well, you can't help it, Lum. You fellas are doing all you can, and Horlicks are doing all they can. Yeah, there's another thing. I hate it on Mr. Horlicks' account, too. He's worried about it, you know. You see, we never had no idea we'd get so many requests for him. Well, I thought you wanted all you can get. Oh, we do. Yeah, sure we do. Mr. Horlick is from tickled over it. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sort of glad it happened right at this time, too, did you? You know, tomorrow's uh, Mr. Horlick's birthday, you know. Oh, it is. Oh, tomorrow. yeah, yeah. He'll be 89 years old tomorrow. Well. 89 and still active head of his business that he started over 50 years ago. Well, now, Brian George, that's quite a record, you know. <laughs> that's a good testimonial for his malted milk right there. Yeah. <laughs> I was just saying that. Wait a minute. Here comes Abner. <laughs> yeah. Well, he's not wearing that derby hat and striped vest today, is he? Oh, no, no. He gave them back to Squire here yesterday and told him he was too done with him. <laughs> Oh, uh, don't let on that I ain't trying to get elected now, Dick, because if I was to win, I won't have to think it's because I'm campaigning so hard to done it. Oh, yeah, sure. No, I wouldn't say nothing. I want him to think I'm trying my best. Well, howdy, fellas. Yeah, come in, Abner. I've got some good news for you. What's that? Why, well, I, I counted the votes a while ago, and you're 784 or 5 ahead of me now. Oh, howdy, Dick. How are you today? Well, all right, I reckon, Abner. Did you see that story in the paper about you today? 
No, I ain't sorry somebody was telling me about it. Well, they're mad because you asked for that donate back that you give the library in there. Well, I figured they would be. Yeah, they claimed you never aimed to let them keep it in the first place when you give it to them. Said you're just doing it to get votes. Well, just so that I get the money back, that's all I care about. Yeah. You get beat, you can just blame it on to that, Abner. I'll carry the county seat by ten to one now, bound you. Yeah, you're going to have to get out here and work hard tomorrow, Abner, if this contest closes Sunday night. Yeah. Well, I don't know. That's just what I want to talk to you fellas about. I just might not have decided to just take plum out of the race. Take out of Yeah, just get out. You ain't give up, have you? No, I ain't give up, but I just got to figure that if I do get elected, I'm going to have to give Squire Skimp ten cents or... And person on everything. Well, now, I wouldn't let that influence me. If I get elected, I don't want you to think that you just give me the office. If I get it, I want to win it fair and square. Well, I'd love to have it the worst way, but uh, I don't know. I just hate to see old Squire make anything off of it after the way he's done. Yeah. Well, now, I wouldn't withdraw it. No, all these people have voted for you, your friends, you know. Well, you wouldn't want to turn them down right here at the last minute. Why, of course not. You get that office. We'll study up some way out of that contract with Squire Skin. How? Well, I don't know. Just offhand, we'll study up something. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, I'm afraid that contract be hard to break, Lum. Ah, no, no, don't you worry, Abner. I'll thumb through the statutes and find something in there. Well, I was talking to Squire a while ago, and he said that there ain't no way out of it. He said he got me. Where was Squire at? Well, he's over about the blacksmith shop a while ago. I don't know where he's at now. He's working harder than ever to get me elected. What do you say, Lon? We go over and talk to old Squire about that. <laughs> You've just taken the words right out of my mouth, Dick. <laughs> Must have read my mind. Get your hat there. Well, I don't think it'll do a bit of good, man. I done talk to him and he won't listen. Well, it ain't going to hurt nothing to try. Come on, Dick. I'll be back after a little, Abner. Yeah, I'll see you later, Abner. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I can tell you right now, you're just wasting your time, all. That old skin plant. I just hate that Squire's camp too, people. I dog it, I hate to do it, but there ain't no other way around it. I just got to do it. That's all there are to it. Uh, hello? Uh, this is Abner Peabody talking. Uh, I got a little announcement to make uh, about myself. I'm in a batch of trouble here. I appreciate all the votes that you folks sent in for me, but now then, I, I've just got to keep from getting elected some way or other. Or if I do, I, Squire Skimp's going to get 10% of everything I make from here out. I, I don't want to withdraw from the race, but I, I want Lum to get to office. The way things stand now, I, I'm nearly 800 votes ahead, so for goodness sake, send in a vote for Lum and get it in the mail before Sunday night. This is the first time that I ever got out and campaigned again myself, but... It's the only way I know to beat Squire Skin. So if you want to help me do it, why, send in a vote for Lum. But now, don't none of you let on to Lum, but I told you to do that now. Well, I, I'll be looking for a letter from you. Thank you. <laughs> well, it sounds odd, but if you want to help Abner, send in a vote for Lum. Everybody, here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. How many of you radio listeners have trouble getting to sleep some nights? Light tossing around waiting for sleep that seems never to come. Quite a few of you probably. All of you I know at some time or another. And here's a suggestion that's proved helpful too many in this predicament. One that I think might prove helpful to you. Before going to bed, drink a glass full of Horlicks malted milk. Hot. You'll notice a difference at once. It soothes and relaxes you. 
helps you to fall asleep easily and naturally. And that's not all. Horlicks helps you to sleep soundly. You know, scientists have shown us that broken sleep isn't restful sleep. To be really beneficial, it must be deep and continuous, they say. And that's a good point to remember. We all need plenty of good, continuous sleep, both young and old. It builds up resistance to illnesses, too. Why not try Horlicks tonight? You'll be surprised how much fresher you'll feel in the morning. Remember a glass full of Horlicks malted milk, hot, just before going to bed. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, yesterday was the last day of the contest in which the public was asked to select the president for Lum and Abner's new store. Squire Skimp, Abner's campaign manager, and who is particularly interested in the outcome of the election, has demanded an official count of the votes sent in. And so as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner waiting in the front part of the store while Dick Huddleston, Grandpappy Spears, and Squire Skimp are back in the feed room making a final count of the votes. Listen. Well, I wish they'd hurry up in there. I'm getting tired of waiting. Yeah, I could have had them votes counted two hours ago. All we needed to do was just count the votes that come in today and add them to what we already had counted. Yeah, but Squire's going back over all the votes, so counting the whole business over again. Yeah, he's bound and determined that you're going to get elected. He's on that 10% you agreed to pay him if you get elected. Yeah, sure, that's what's worrying him a lot. It's a good thing we got Grandpappy and Dick back there watching him. He'd claim he's elected regardless of how many votes he got. Well, I tried to withdraw from a race, and Squire claimed that on account of signing that contract that I had to stay in there. Well, I think I'll win it all right, so I wouldn't worry none about it if I was you. Well, that's just a trouble, Lum. I'm going to be disappointed either way it goes. Disappointed? Yeah, if I win, I'm going to hate to pay Squire 10% of everything I make for the rest of my life. And if you win, why, well, I'm going to be disappointed because I never got to be prayed in the store. Well, now, you oughtn't to feel that way about it, Abner. We left it up to the folks out on the party line to elect whichever one they wanted. And when it gets beat or to take it in the right spirit. Don't want to have no hard feelings over it, over one another. Oh, no, I ain't sure. I ain't going to get mad at nobody. Over it. Well, that's fine. If there's anything I hate is a poor loser. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. There they come. <laughs> well, who in the office, Dick? Well, we're not through yet, Lum. I just huh. come out to get a drink of water. You got any drinking water around here? Yeah, there's a bucket right there on the end of the counter, Dick. Cedric just brought it and brung it in a while ago. Yeah, how long will it be for you, too, Dick? Yeah, we're getting sort of curious out here. <laughs> <laughs> well, it oughtn't to be long, just a few minutes, I reckon. We've got all the votes counted now, and we've got to total them up. Well, uh, how's it looking? Can you tell anything about it yet? Well, yeah, I believe Abner's a little ahead, the best I can tell, Lum. Abner is? Well, go. <laughs> uh, no. Dad, blame it, I wish I could make up my mind where I want to get elected or not. I thought you'd want me to get the over so you wouldn't have to pay Squire nothing. Well, I... Uh, well, I don't know what you want. Uh, take that bucket on in there with you, Dick, if you mind, too. Give them other fellas a drink. Oh, we'll be through in there, Drexel, Lum, and we'll let you know it as soon as we can. Yeah, all right, Dick. I don't get I can't wait to tell Elizabeth. <laughs> and she's gonna be awful proud of me being prayed down the store. Yeah, but wait till she finds out you're paying Squire ten percent of everything you make just for managing your campaign for you. She yeah. won't be so proud of you. That blame him, that blame him. Swan too goodness, he gets me so aggravated every time I think of him I could run butt my head against something. One, two, goodness. I tried to tell you and you wouldn't listen to me. The only way to get along with Squire Skimps is just to stay away from him. Yeah. Wished I knowed some way of getting even with him. That's what I wish. Yeah. yeah. We'll find a chance. According to that contract, you have to pay him 10% of what you make on your farm, and 10% of everything you make here in the store, and 10% of your constable fees, and 10% of everything, I reckon. Yeah, I know it. Yeah, according to that, I pay him 10% of everything I make from here out. Well, we just bide our time. We'll find a chance. He's imposed on us for years around here, and I'm getting just about enough of it. The only way to get even with a feller like that is just to give him a dose of his own medicine. Huh? Uh, give him what? I say we'll give him a dose of his own medicine. Is he sick? No. <laughs> he will be again we get done with him about you. Oh, <laughs> give him something that'll make him sick, huh? Yeah, we'll make him wish he'd never tried out any of them crooked schemes on us. Yeah, 
Yeah, that'll fix him. Yes, sir. That's the worst tasting stuff I ever put in my mouth. What's the worst tasting stuff? Why, that, that medicine of his that we're going to give him a dose of. What medicine are you talking about? Why, that and that he's got the agency for us. I bought a bottle of it off of him the other day. We can just give him that. I just taken one dose out of it. Well, I ain't talking about that kind of medicine, no, Abner. I well, mean, now, it'll... it'll sure make him sick. I can guarantee you that. It's awful. Well, I know the kind of medicine I'm talking about, though, will be a heap worse than anything he ever had. Yeah, yeah. i, I tell you what we can do, Lum. Just take all the worst-tasting medicine we can think of and mix them up together. Astrophytitis and castor oil and quinine and sulfur and apple bitter. Well, and... wait a minute, Abner. You still don't know what I'm talking about. Well, now, if you can think up a worse mixture than that, I'd like to hear it. Well, you ought to know we couldn't get Squire to take no such conglomeration as that. Well, no, of course. It's going to be hard. I know that. I expect we're just going to have to make him take it, just force him down. You still way. don't know what I mean. When I said we'd give him a dose of his own medicine, I didn't mean we'd sure enough give him no medicine. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, just make him think it is, huh? No. Well, now, we could do that all right, Mom. We could mix up anything we wanted to, you know, and put it in that bottle that his medicine come in, fool him that away. Oh, for he that. wouldn't know the difference till he got it in his Abner, mouth. Abner, would you <laughs> shut up about giving him a dose of medicine? Well, you were the one that brung it up. I never even thought about it till I you thought... I said we'd get even with him, give him a dose of it. No, just forget about the medicine. Forget about it? Yeah. Not going to use it, huh? No, never aim to to start with. I just oh, said... Oh, are you just saying that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what I mean, we'll study up something to pull on him that's just as bad as some of the stunts he's pulled on us. Yeah, well, now, Lum, my opinion now, that, that medicine will come just as nigh doing as anything I know of, if we can figure out some way to get him to take it. Abner, if you say medicine one more time, I'm going to whop you one. I'm trying to help you study up something that'll beat him at his own game, and all you want to do is talk about medicine. Yeah. Well, now, let's see now, that brings up something else. Now, what kind of a game could we study up where we could get the best of him, Lum? Game? Yeah, I, I know we can beat him at checkers, but, lo, me, I don't see how that's going to get even with him. No, I, I still think the medicine's the best idea. Come on, Abner, you're the hardest feller to explain anything to i ever seen. You get something on your mind, it'd take a stick of dynamite to jar it out. I said a while ago that we'd get even with Squire by giving him a dose of his own medicine, and you thought it out. Yeah, would... but don't you know, now, Lum, you've changed your mind about that now. You want to beat him at his own game, you say. Well, that's the same thing, Abner, the same thing exactly. That's what I'm trying to tell you. Oh, you mean that giving somebody a dose of medicine is some kind of a game? No, Abner. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Here they come. Huh? Here they come. I reckon they've got the votes counted. Well, fellas, the election is all over. Well, uh, who was elected? Well, uh, Grandpap's got the figures there. Go ahead and read them, Grandpap. Well, now, according to our count, fellas, uh, well, Lum, you was elected by 17, fo 17 votes majority. Lum was elected. Well, fine, fine. <laughs> yes, I uh, noted all the time. The votes that come in today was might nigh every one for Lum. If you'd have stayed with me, Abner, instead of getting out here working for Lum these last few days, well, I'd have got you elected by a big majority. Instead of working for me? Why, yes, that's just what he done, Lum. That announcement that he made on the party line the other day, asking all his friends to vote for him, is just what beat him. Hmm. Abner, did you ask the folks out on the party line to vote for me? Well, yeah, I figured that was the best way out of it, Lum. I know that if you got elected at that contract that I had with Squire wouldn't be no count then. You mean that you, you done that for me, Abner, and knowing how bad you wanted the office and all? Well, I just figured that was about the only thing left for me to do. I couldn't make up my mind whether I wanted or wanted you to get it, and so I just decided to ask the folks to vote for you, and then if they done it, why, I wouldn't have to pay Squire the 10% no more. One, two, goodness. And by the way, Squire, I reckon you're satisfied now that I was elected. Oh, sure, there's no doubt about that, Lum. We went back and counted every vote to come in. Well, Squire, that contract that you got Abner to sign won't do you no good now, then. Mm, uh, no, I reckon not, Lum. Well, no. If you don't mind, just hand that back to Abner, then, so she can tear it up. Oh, yeah, sure. No, I ain't got no use for it no more. Uh, here, Abner. Yeah, much right. All right. <laughs> that gets that contract out of the way, then. Uh, according to the vote, I'm elected president of the Jotham Down store. But I've got sense enough to know that I wouldn't have been elected if Abner hadn't got out here and asked his friends to vote for me. No, I don't believe you would either, Lum. Now, I've always been president of the store here ever since we started, and I hate to give up the office. But I know Abner's always wanted to hold the office. Well, yes, I 
did want to be president mighty bad long. I had some new ideas that I want to try out in that store business, but you was elected, so I reckon I'll just forget about it. Now, what I started to say, uh, Abner would have had to pay Squire 10% of everything he made if he'd been elected, but he can't collect nothing off of him if I just give the office to Abner. From now on, Abner's going to be president of the Jot'em Down store. I'm turning the office over to you, Abner. Let's see what you can do with it. And one of Abner's lifelong ambitions has now been realized. President Abner Peabody. This is Carlton Bricker speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlicks, who now bid you all good night and good health.